This is um, another video from SWAE 3411, Environmental Soil Microbiology. Uh, and today uh, I'm going to be answering some questions from Arwa, one of our students, uh, about uh, the, the lecture on nitrogen cycle in soil microbes. So on the screen we have the questions that Arwa sent me. Um, first of all, she asks if the carbon to nitrogen ratio increases in the soil, uh, more than normal, or are we going to have more residue decomposition, so more nitrogen is going to be recycled from residues? And what is better, to have high or low karma to nitrogen ratio? The answer for the first question is no. When we have a high carbon to nitrogen re uh, uh, residue, what's going to happen is the microbial biomass will uh, lock all the nitrogen on the microbial biomass and the lack of available nitrogen will slow down the decomposition of these materials. The decomposition will be highest when the carbon to nitrogen ratio is lowest. So the more nitrogen you have, the quicker the carbon will be decomposed on the soil. But the, it's not optimum that you have uh, too low carbon to nitrogen ratio. Like for example, um, I, I, manures, for example, fresh manures, or um, for example, uh, poultry manure, or um, let's say also if you add to the soil uh, dairy products, uh, waste, or something with very high amount of nitrogen and low uh, carbon. So if you load the carbon to nitrogen ratio too much, this becomes too good for the microbes, which means that they will grow too quickly and what they will cause will be anaerobic conditions. The decomposition will be so quick that they will all the oxygen will be depleted and then you have anaerobic conditions being formed because the speed in which the gas diffuses on the soil will be uh, lower than the, the rate in which the microbes are uh, um, uh, taking the oxygen. So too low carbon to nitrogen ratio in the compost pile or in the soil, it means that you, you are creating anaerobic conditions. If it's too high, it means that the composition will be slowed because all the nitrogen will be depleted. If you deplete the nitrogen, there's no available nitrogen. You have to wait for the, the microbial biomass to be cycled, and then the, uh, when the microbial biomass is cycled, then the, the nitrogen becomes available again and uptaken again. But it also means that if there is no nitrogen on the system, the the plants also have no access to nitrogen. So high carbon to nitrogen ratio means that plants and other microbes will not ha have access to the nitrogen. Therefore, they will decrease their biomass. Will become, there, there will be an imbalance on the microbial biomass. <clears throat> and too low, it means that you are uh, growing too quickly. So I, either way is not uh, convenient. The more common problem is high carbon to nitrogen ratio, not low carbon to nitrogen ratio, uh, uh, because normally uh, 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 plant leaves and, and dry materials will have high carbon to nitrogen ratio. So if you add too much of it or if you mix it with the soil, uh, you will be causing nitrogen immobilization in the microbial biomass. And not uh, the other way around is uh, a problem which is not so often found. But ideally, what you want to find is carbon to nitrogen ratios around uh, uh, 20. Yeah? If, you, if you're over 30, it, it's a, a problem. If you are below 20 or below 15, it's, it becomes a problem also. So this is about the first question. Yeah? Uh, if we add organic amendments to soil to have a, a low carbon to nitrogen ratio during the mineralization of the microbes, we'll have higher in amount. So let me read this again. If we add organic amendments to soil that have low carbon to nitrogen ratio, so during the mineralization the microbes will have high in amounts, so they can convert carbon uh, and the excess will build up in soil. Is that bad? So uh, again uh, coming back to that issue of low carbon to nitrogen ratio is the problem with the carbon to nitrogen ratio is not the, the, the stoichiometric limitation of not having enough nitrogen to decompose the carbon. 
When you have low carbon to nitrogen ratio, you do have enough nitrogen to decompose all the available carbon that you have on the soil. All the, all the easy sources of carbon will be able to be recycled by the microbes. The, the real problem with very low carbon to nitrogen ratio is that it's too good. So the microbes will go too quickly and the, in the, um, the, it will cause also an imbalance on the system uh, uh, in the, 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 um, the oxidation uh, uh, conditions of the environment will become more uh, anoxic. And um, yeah, so this is a problem that you will not find too often. And normally when you lower the carbon, carbon to nitrogen uh, uh, ratio, you lower it to a point uh, uh, where it's still in the, in the comfortable range, which will not affect negatively the microbes. So when you have on, the, on that range of carbon to nitrogen ratio uh, uh, along the lines of uh, between 15 and, and uh, 25 and, or 30, it means that uh, the, the rate of decomposition is in a good pace and the, the cycling of organic matter is in a good pace and that nutrients are coming back to the microbes. There are no limitation of nitrogen and uh, the, the recycle of this organic matter will also provide other nutrients for microbes and plants on the system. Very rarely you will have that the carbon to nitrogen ratio will be too low. Normally, it's uh, when it's low, it's in a good range. Yeah, the the low carbon to nitrogen ratio in soils normally they are in a good range. The, the often the problem would be it's that it's too high. If you add uh, materials with a high carbon to nitrogen ratio. So uh, next question is uh, denitrification is good in removing high amount of nitrates in soil because it may lead to the groundwater. But what controls the amount of nitrate being removed from soil so we can avoid the deficiency? So uh, denitrification, it's um, a good thing in a way, but it's a bad thing in another way. Yeah? Denitrifications uh, are, um, are happening on anoxic conditions. So for a starter, denitrification are happening in a condition which are not adequate for plant roots in general. You need to have high moisture content, um, uh, uh, sites, anaerobic sites in the soil where you have this uh, denitrification happening in a reducing condition. So the microbes in the denitrification process will be using the nitrate as a source of oxygen, not as a source of energy. So if you, if you lose this nitrate, of course you are preventing the leaching of this nitrate to the groundwater. But you, at the same time, nitrate is a bioavailable form of, uh, of nitrogen. And if you denitrify this, you're losing the bioavailability of, of, of nitrogen. You're losing available nitrogen to the plants. So you actually, from the agronomic perspective, you don't want uh, to, uh, to have high denitrification on soils, both because the conditions for denitrification are not the best conditions for the plants. And at the same time, you are losing nitrogen from the soil. And this uh, nitrogen loss is, uh, represents a low, uh, a decrease in the efficiency of the nitrogen fertilizer. And a next point which makes denitrification not very great for, uh, for uh, agronomic purposes is that during the denitrification, you have a, a good amount of emission of uh, nitrous oxides, and these are greenhouse gases. Therefore, uh, it's contributing for uh, global warming. So you don't want to maximize denitrification because in that process you are uh, emitting greenhouse gases. So uh, ideally you will minimize denitrification and what you want is that the majority of the nitrogen to be locked in the organic matter and the microbial biomass or be directly uptaken by plants. Neither the, um, the ammonium volatilization or the denitrification process are desirable um, uh, processes in agronomic systems. Um, fourth question is, uh, does, uh, do microbes have more important roles in nitrogen cycle than in the carbon cycle? Then uh, that answer for the question is, this is very uh, a personal view. I would say that all functions in the soil are important. The, the microbes involved on the carbon cycle, all of them are important. The microbes involved on the nitrogen cycle, all of them are important. The only thing that I would emphasize is that 
in the nitrogen cycle, you are more likely to have uh, keystone species. Why? What is? Key, what are keystone species? Or uh, uh, species that uh, the, this single species would have a, uh, a key role on a, um, a step on the cycle in the ecosystem. If you lose that species, then you lose that that role on the environment. So when you have, for example, uh, biological nitrogen fixation, you you might have a diversity of those microbes. But uh, sometimes it's one species which is uh, it's responsible for the majority of the nitrogen fixation in the, in the whole ecosystem. So we, you have one species of, uh, of legume, and that species of legume is associated with one, with one species of rhizobium, and that species of rhizobium is keystone is a keystone species on that ecosystem. If you lose that, you will be in trouble. So this uh, this. Um, the microbes on the nitrogen cycle, I would say that some of their uh, roles and some of their enzymes, they are not very diverse and they're very unique. And, the, and therefore, uh, you, you have, um, I would say, less resilience in recovering uh, some, of these, um, some of these traits in the soil uh, because they are so uh, not... Uh, widely distributed and not very diverse. But in a sense, if you think about it, every diverse ecosystem, all the functions, they, you need them there um, and, and they will be having a role in a way. So all these microbes, different functions, they are important. You cannot say that uh, uh, nitrogen uh, uh, microbes are, uh, are acting uh, in a more important way than the carbon cycle microbes. Um, and you, you can say also that many of these microbes are, are, are acting in many nutrient cycles at the same time. So many microbes from the nitrogen cycle, they, most of them are also acting on the carbon cycle. Uh, it's uh, heterotrophic microbes, for example. Uh, and uh, some of them are acting on the sulfur cycle. And these are, these are uh, overlaps that are very, very important for, um, for soil environments. So I hope this uh, answer all the questions and I, I made this video to make these answers available for all the students. Um, thank you very much.